Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution to question 3 from the May 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they tell us that on Jan 1st, 2009, Akil Rampal's balance sheet was as follows. Okay, so we have a very strange looking balance sheet here. Now, this is the old horizontal format, but it's not in proper order. You start off with plant and machinery, then we have account receivable, cash, furniture and fittings, inventory, prepaid insurance. So at least the assets are on one side and liabilities and capital are on the other side. Okay, but of course, this is not in proper order. Now we have some other items here. It says during the first week, Ram Paul recorded the following transactions. So we have seven transactions here, right? Now, before we go through each one, let's see what they want us to do. So it says prepare for Akil Rampal a revised balance sheet as at February 7th, 09, to show the effects of the first week's transaction. I think that should be Jan 7, 2009, if it's the first week's transaction. Okay, NB, your balance sheet must be classified as in you must have sections, non-current assets, current assets, etc. And in vertical styles and all working must be clearly shown. Okay, 20, full 20 marks. So this is the whole question here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to do working so certain items and then we're going to drop the balance sheet. Okay. All right. So the first item that they're telling us here, transaction wise, sold machinery with net book value of 2000 for 1200 cash and bought new machinery for 6900 paying by check. Okay. So we have a few things affected here. So this is, this is a real test to see if you could, if you know about your double entry, despite the fact we have no debits and credits really being tested here. But you need to understand the movement in value, all right? And of course, when things happen on one side, there's usually, if not always, another side to be examined. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the machinery. So we're selling machinery with a net book value of 2000 and we're buying more with 6900 So machinery is going to go down 2000 and up 6900 Now in the balance sheet, the plant and machinery at net book value is 20004 so we're going to start off our working with that, right? Plant and machinery balance, balance at start 20,004. Now don't forget, we sold 2,000 worth of the machinery and we bought 6,900 worth of machinery. So we're going to minus 2,000 and add back 6,900 and that's going to give us 25,003. Now, that was not the only thing affected by this transaction. We got cash because we sold the machinery for cash and we also bought machinery with checks. So cash is going up bank is going down and we made a loss on the sale of machinery. Now, disposals of assets has not been on the syllabus since the mid 2000s, 2005, 2006. This paper was in 09. So I was a bit surprised to see that they brought something like this there, right? Of course, I, I could be mixing up some of my dates somewhat, but I do remember that because I was still teaching in a high school at that point in time. All right. So we're going to come back to that. Let's take a look at the next transaction. Okay, so they're telling us that we collected 11 or 2 in cash from debtors. So what's happening here is cash is going up and debtors is going down. If you collected cash, cash goes up. Where did it come from? Your debtors, which means when your debtors paid you back, the amount they owe you went down. All right. Now, that means we have two things for cash. Uh, let's, let's actually take a little brief look at the other transactions. Inventory was revalued, okay, no, that doesn't affect cash. Insurance was used up, that doesn't affect cash. Creditors were paid by check, that will affect bank. And the outstanding wages were paid in cash. All right, so we have a few things here affecting cash. Let's go up to the asset section and find out the cash balance as it was at the start, 1183. Okay, so we're gonna pull up our little work in. We're gonna put cash balance at start, 1183. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna add, we're gonna subtract here, actually add, sorry, is the 1200 in cash from the sale of the machinery. So we're going to put that there. The next one was the second thing we just looked at was the 1102. We're going to add 1102 because we collected that from the debtors. And then finally, it says the outstanding wages were paid in cash. Where do we find outstanding wages? We find that in the liabilities section in the balance sheet. That's $940. Okay. So we're going to put that as a, a negative or subtracted item here and doing your arithmetic. You're going to come up with 2,545. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at is the bank balance. 
So the bank balance is actually an overdraft. It's actually on the liability side here. So I'm going to put that as a negative balance. Overdrafts are negative bank balances. Long story short. Now, the same first transaction had us buying machinery for 6900 which means your overdraft is going to increase. It's an outflow on top of an already negative balance, right? Next, um, okay, so we have collected cash from debtors. No, that's cash. Um, the third and fourth item, right? Inventory revalued insurance. No. Aha, this one here, creditors were paid by check, 3340. So that's another payment. So we're going more into an overdraft. Uh, on the sixth item, wages were outstanding. Nope. Uh, we paid. Aha, this one here. Receive the check 13,000 from brother as a loan to be repaid in two years. Okay, so this is going to affect bank. That's an inflow to bank, which is a positive figure. So now when you do your arithmetic, we're going to get a closing bank balance of 1,360, but it's still an overdraft. Okay, now <clears throat> we keep, I'm, I'm doing certain items here that had the, the largest number of changes, the most changes. But in each of these items, there's at least one other item affected. Right, so I'm gonna do one more calculation here and then we're gonna to jump to the balance sheet. And as we go through the balance sheet, we're gonna talk about why certain things moved in certain ways. Now, the last item we're gonna take a look at is the capital balance. So that's started off as $35,000. Now, follow me here, strap on your seatbelt. The first thing we're gonna put is the loss made on the sale of the machinery. So you might be asking, well, Chris, why are we gonna put a loss? Why are we gonna subtract that loss from capital? When people get into business, they do so to make a profit. When they make a profit, that's their own, right? At the end of the income statement, when you see net profit, that is actually transferred to the capital account, right? It increases capital because it goes to the owner. But if you make a loss, where does that go? That also goes to the capital account. But instead of increasing capital, it's going to decrease capital because they lost money. So who has to cover that? The owner is going to come out of the owner's investment. It's going to come out of capital. So the net book value of the equipment, machinery, sorry, was 2000. We sold it for 1200, which was 800 less than its value. So we made a loss of $800. So we're going to subtract that. That's the first thing. Okay, next up, um, collected cash from debtors. No, nope, that's fine. That doesn't affect capital. Aha, inventory was revalued. So as far as I know, you guys might know about revaluing inventory when if like, let's say inventory was undercast, like when you're correcting errors via the general journal. So if inventory was revalued, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Now it's, it's revalued to 4,300. If we look up in the balance sheet, the initial balance sheet, it was 5,000. So for some reason, we wrote down the value of inventory by $700. We don't know why, but maybe uh, a new model came out or whatever. Maybe there was damage. We had to write it down. So that's a loss, right? So it says less write down of inventory. Okay, next we have um, insurance of 20 was used up, right? For one, it was used up. Now, up in the balance sheet, we have prepaid insurance 160, right? So that's an asset. So you pay, you pay an advance for your insurance. So it hasn't been incurred yet. But when the expense is incurred, your prepayment is going to go down. It's going to be used up. Now that's the incurrence of an expense, which also basically increases, it, it decreases profit slash increases losses. So that's also going to be a deduction there. Now, the outstanding wages being paid in cash, right? So that was an accrual being dealt with. So that would not affect profit, right? The accrual would, all, would have affected profit in the previous income statement. So it would have already been adjusted for in the capital balance. So that doesn't affect profit. And receive the check from, okay, so that doesn't affect profit. Or capital, right? So all we have to do is run the arithmetic, and we're going to get a closing balance for capital of thirty-three thousand four hundred and eighty. Okay, let's pull up the balance sheet and start to populate it with these new adjusted figures. Okay, so of course, head up your statement, name of the entity, Akilo Rampol, name of the statement of financial position, and the date at which it's being drawn up. Now they didn't tell us what order. It said in proper classif classified and vertical style. I'm going to do it two ways, both of them in order of permanence. The first way will be net assets, as in assets on top minus liabilities equal to capital below. And then I'm going to show the assets only on top equal to capital plus liabilities below. Just to show you all a, a couple of different versions, right? There's no one right way to draw a balance sheet. If you want to check out my playlist on how to draw balances in different ways, I'm going to put a card on there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check it out, okay? Now, 
Let's start populating here. So we're going to start with the non-current assets. So we have the plant and machinery, right? So as you can see, we started off with the 20,400. We subtracted the 2,000 that we sold and we added the 6,900 that we bought, right? Now we also had furniture and fittings of 10,840. So we are going to put that in here as well. Adding those two together gives us a subtotal of 36,140 for non-current assets. Now let's talk about the current assets. The first one up is the inventory. So you're seeing an inventory is 5,000 minus 700. That's because across in the initial balance sheet, they told us that it was $5,000. And then below in the notes, note three, inventory was revalued to 43. So that's why it's saying 43 here, it went down by seven. Next. We have account receivable 7817 minus 1102, giving us 6715. Where did this come from? In the initial balance sheet, account receivable 7817. And then on the second, the second note, sorry, collected 1102 in cash from debtor. So that's going to decrease the debtor's balance. Okay. Next item up was the prepaid insurance. So prepaid insurance was given to us in this balance sheet here, 160. Item in item four, insurance of $20 for one week was used up. So if your prepayment is used up, it's going to go down. And 160 minus 20 is 140. Next, we have cash. So you're seeing a, a bit of work in there. Now we did that on the previous page, so I'm not going to go into too much detail there, right? We're going to take a subtotal for <coughs> sorry, current assets. And we're going to have total assets 49,840. Now, liabilities. So we had item seven. Received a check from brother for 13000 as a loan to be repaid in two years. So it's a liability lasting for more than one year, which is a non-current liability. Now we deal with current liabilities. So we had some accrued wages, which we paid off. So, so you, don't, you don't actually have to have this item here. <laughs> I'm just including it for the sake of illustration. Okay. Again, in the original balance sheet, we had accrued wages, 940. And note 6 tells us the outstanding wages were paid in cash. Right. Next item up is accounts payable. 5340 minus 3340 is 2000. Right. So the original accounts payable was 5340. And then note 5 tells us that creditors were paid 3340 by check. So if you pay back your creditors, you're going to reduce your liability. Hence why we are subtracting. Right. Following that, we have bank overdraft. So we did the working for that on the previous page. So I'm not going to go into detail as to what those numbers mean. You can always rewind and check it out. Adding those two together gives us total current liabilities of 3,360, which when added to your non-current liabilities gives us 16,360, which we are going to subtract from total assets to give us net assets of 33,480. And that has to be financed by capital. And guess what? Remember we did a calculation of capital on the previous page? What did we get? We got the same 33,480 and our balance sheet balances. Okay, so again, like I said, we did this on the previous page, so you could always go back and check it out if you want to remember or be refreshed as to how we came up with those figures. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this on the left side, and I'm going to pull up the other balance sheet on the right hand side to show you an alternative presentation. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the transactions again. I'm just going to populate the items, starting with the non-current assets, followed by the current assets. So we have those items, and we have a total for assets and that's where the top half of the balance sheet is going to end in this particular version then we're going to say it has to be financed by capital and liabilities remember assets are the resources that the entity uses to engage in business activities in order to generate revenue and ultimately earn profit where do those resources come from where does the money to pay for those resources come from well either from the owner via capital or equity capital or from entities other than the owner. We borrow money, which are collectively classified as liabilities. So we're going to start off with the capital figure, as per the calculation in the previous page. And we are going to add the liabilities. So we have non-current liabilities, the loan from brother, and then the current liabilities. So again, I'm just including the accrued wages, accrued expenses as for illustrative purposes. Accounts payable, bank overdraft, right? And we're going to total up liabilities and add it to the 33,480. And guess what? We get 49,840, which matches with the total assets on top here. And our balance sheet balances, just a slightly different looking version, right? The long-term finance version. Anyhow, that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2009 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. 
if you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PVA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.